Hi you guys, how are you doing? Um, wow, it's super late here. And, um, uh, I was asleep and then I woke up in the middle of the night and just felt extra creative. So, um, I decided to come into my craft room and, um, I didn't know what to make. And then I was, you know, doing a little bit of online shopping on my laptop and, um, I've seen something that I really, really want, and but I don't see the sense in buying this because it's like two hundred and sixty dollars, and I already have like the majority of everything that's already in this thing, and so I'm like, well, I'd just be buying everything I already have just to get the storage caddy thingy, and so um, I decided I was gonna make try and attempt to make my own. If not. And then I'll break down and buy the storage caddy thing. Because, um, what it is, is, um, it's the Design Memory Craft, um, uh, by Fabric Castells, um, Mixed Media Caddy. And I'll insert a picture of it, um, right now, and then I'll come back, okay? Okay, you guys, so, now you've seen the picture of what I'm talking about, and, um, I, I want this. <laughs> so, um, I decided to uh, try and make it, and I started, and I kind of wanted to, um, do a video, um, not, like, as I'm making it, because it's going to take me a while to make it, but maybe as a progress video, so, like, um, you can see start to finish, um, and sort of see step by step on how I do it. And, um, like, I want, like, this is just my, um, gelato box. And I don't, I, I don't want this crayon box anymore. This is my son's. I borrowed it forever ago. And I want something to where it's, you know, I can get my watercolor pencils and my gelatos. And then I have the big brush, um, thingy over by my, um, makes me a cart and I just I want to put all this stuff in one place easy to grab type thing like here's my pen and so this that's what I'm thinking so let me show you what I've got started here okay so I sketched out my plan really quick and this is my plan. I want it to be, um, let me, let me grab my book really quick. This is my sketchbook. It was my monthly sketchbook, and I stopped sketching month to month, so I figured I might, well, might as well use it. I'm like, I'm hoping you can see my sketch. I'll kind of raise it up. Okay. So, that's my plan. I want it to be 10 inches tall by 12 inches wide with 3 inch um, pockets, which would give me 4 pockets by 4 rows deep. I don't know if that makes sense to you. But yeah, that's, that, that's what I want. And so I started building my template. And like this right here is going to be the back, which is 10 inches tall. And it's white chipboard on one side and craft on the other. And this is going to be the, the front of it, and it's going to be 12 inches in diameter this way. So, and then I took and I cut my sides, and I've made all my, um, yeah, I'm going to, for lack of a better word, like the spines, and I've got them all scored, and these are just the 10 inch spines, which are going to be, like, right here. Let me see Okay, maybe you might be able to see a little better. So what this does is you, you score it here, and it comes like so. Can you see? To where it's going to kind of give it a wall. And so, and then these lines on the inside here, I've measured each three inches apart to where... When I take these ones, and I've already cut all five pieces that I'm going to need for down the center. And, um, 
they just line up on each individual line. And these, you put a spine on it this way instead of around it. And it attaches that way to where you have this started. And then I'm going to build the, um, the dividers after I get this part put together. So that's how far I've gotten. And I will check in once I get this all put together. And, and I have the, um, what do you call it, the bottom right here. And which is just going to be a 12 by 12 square. Um, another thing, a good place to purchase chipboard, like this is the um, 25 pack of um, medium weight chipboard. It's pretty um, thick chipboard. Um, I purchased mine at walmart.com and um, I just have it shipped. It's like insanely expensive. Like I spent like 97 cents um, shipping per um, chipboard. So basically it's like 13 bucks for 25 sheets, which isn't bad at all. And it's really sturdy chipboard. And they have, and then for like the craft color, if you, the craft color is the cheapest. It's like $9 um, for 25 sheets and it's still the 97 cents. So basically 10 bucks for the, um, the craft color. And they also have black. So if you're interested in looking for chipboard that is a little thicker, um, like bookboard, that's a good place to get it. So, okay, um, I will check in with you um, once I get this assembled and when I'm ready to start the dividers. Okay, see you in the other part of the video. Hey guys, so I know I said I would come back to this when I'm at the next step, but um, I, I'm further along now. I just wanted to stop and share this really quick. Um, for people who's never really done um, chipboard construction and um, built stuff out of it before, I thought I would stop and do this part. So, um, when building a box like this, and um, this is sort of um, my strategy when building other boxes, it's just this is a different um, shape and angle type thing. Um, this is they're gonna be on the inside. If you see that, it's sort of like the um, the spine type thing, and this is what's gonna attach it to the front. And then with that, um, I also went and I measured three um, inches intervals on the box and measure the height where I know what my divider's height is going to be also. So it's going to be a 3 inch wide by 8.5 inch by 6 inch and, or by 8 inch, 6 inch and 4 inch. And then it'll be the 2 inch down here. And so each one has lines on it to where you know where to you know stick the dividers in. And then I also have the outside. And I wanted to show you, these ones all have a double spines on them. And the outside only has one a spine on each side, and it's angled inwards to where it will hook around the front and the back of the box. Like so. And then the front I have over here. And I don't remember if I showed you that, but like on the, the back and the front also has measurements to where I know where to line these dividers up to have them centered at that three inch interval, if that makes sense. Okay, so I will see you when I have this all put together. Okay. Also, I wanted to share with you really quick before... Um, I put this all together. I use um, Aline's Tacky Glue when I do construction um, with the chipboard just because it's a very heavy based glue and it's got that um, initial uh, hence Tacky Glue um, tack to where um, it sets up quickly. And when I use it, I just 
stick a nice thick strip on both sides when I'm doing the center. And you know, just make sure it's nice and thick. And I keep like a really wet, damp baby wipe right here. And I, I keep my little spray bottle with water. And that way, um, I just run my finger over the bead to get it to smear out. I even stick glue over my pencil mark, but I try to keep it thinner where the pencil mark is to where I can actually line up. And then I just wipe the excess glue off on that damp baby wipe to where my fingers don't get all glue filled. Now when I line up, I do it from both sides and just double check my lines and then I rub and like burnish the paper into the glue and the heat from your fingers helps that tacky glue set okay and I just wanted to um, share this step with you because I think your glue choice when building with chipboard is um, very um, important. Because like hot glue will leave like um, like bead strips and stuff in there unless you use like the, one of the hot glue helper tools that will help you smear it out. But it also your drying time is so quick so in order to get that lined up properly um, it's almost impossible and you want your measurements to work so it's sort of important to have it lined up properly okay so I will see you when I have this all put together now that I gave you that tip okay hey guys so I got um, the box put together and now I'm getting ready to build the dividers um, this way and so I got a ton of cutting to do and I kind of wanted to show you the tool that I use to cut my chipboard with just because um, I get this question a lot like um, what cutter do you use? Do you cut it by hand? Um, this angle I had to cut by hand because um, it was actually too wide to fit in my cutter but let me grab my cutter really quick and I will show you the um the tool I use to cut my chipboard. This is called the Zetter Cutter. Um my husband got this for me and I I absolutely love it. So um it has different blade depths right here. Um I typically need to have it on a four in order to cut this chipboard, um, but other chipboards I've had to use it on a two. But this particular brand from Walmart.com, um, it doesn't matter if you get the craft black or white, um, it's always going to be a four on this. And um, I use this cutter or. Um, this one right here, um, this Westcott one, um, I picked it up at Target, and, um, the blade actually is, um, longer than, like, your average cutter, so, and, and it'll go right through chipboard, but you do have to replace the, bra the blade a lot when you use a chipboard in this. I haven't had to replace the um, blade in this uh, so far and I've done one two three four five six seven eight nine ten big projects with it so um, and that's a lot of cutting so 
Um, but I wanted to show you really quick, um, in case you want to see this, the price point on this one compared to the other one. This is um, around $170, $160 versus the other, um, the, the Westcott one I showed you was like $10 at Target. Um, I need to cut some 3 inch um, pieces of chipboard. So um, I'm just going to slide it into the 3 inch mark really quick. Make sure it's straight. Um, there's these little tabs on either end, and you just flip them down like that, and that way you don't have to hold the um, the chipboard down. And this handle here, you just push down, and you hold here to push, and you pull. And it gives you um, a perfect, really clean edge every single time you cut. I'll show you one more time, and then I will get back to building this and come back after I show you this. So you just do this. You put your hand, can you see? Am I all the way in frame? I hope. Put your hand on this knob and kind of push away from it so when you pull this way, it doesn't, you know, flip on you. But the, I have carpal tunnel and nerve damage in both of my hands, so to say this is fairly easy to use, um, it's like an understatement because it's, it, you know, I could do this all day and it wouldn't hurt my hands. So, and I just cut an entire piece of chipboard. And this also does scoring in chipboard to where, um, if you want like your chipboard to like do arches and stuff like that and round, um, it'll do that too. So, okay. Um, I'll see you in the next part of the video. Hi all you lovely faces. Okay, so, um, I finally finished putting my storage caddy together. And I wanted to show you it. It's, um, still in its, um, raw, <clears throat> unfinished state. Like, um. It hasn't been embellished or decorated or anything like that. It's just the raw chipboard. And I wanted to share that part with you sort of as, you know, the next phase of my process. And this is, like, the finished caddy. Let me see if I could... Oh, it made it worse. Okay, here, hang on. I'll, like, let me see if I can tilt that up. Okay, and so um, I got three rows of four different size... Um, can you see all that? Like, it goes from really tall and then down. Um, I got three rows of a different height. And then this one is just this open, like, pocket. And I thought that would be perfect for, because I want to use this as my mixed media caddy. And I have my mixed media, like, paper. And it would fit perfect in here. And then I also have, like, my watercolor pads that I use for my mixed media projects also. And I thought those would go perfect in here also. So that's why I left that open. And I'm not sure if I'm going to put both of them in here or just one of them. Because, like, this would fit really well in there just like that. But that way these are always, because I use this all the time. This is actually the Donna Salazar's Mixed Media um, GCD Studios paper. And so it comes with... Um, label paper, craft paper, um, manila, and watercolor paper, so it's just a bunch of different media type paper. And so, there's that, and then these little pockets here I thought would be perfect for, um, uh, my big brush pens, like, just to sit in there and have access, and then, like, my gelatos, and then my color pencils, and then, like, the really tall ones I was thinking, like, hot glue sticks, um, because I use these really big Let me grab one and show you. Like these really um, tall hot glue sticks. Like this is kind of hard. Let me turn this around so you can see. Um, I use these ones, so I thought they would sit perfect in there as a storage and just other maybe like long pens or markers or stuff like that. 
so th that's what I got, and then I wanted to show you, um, this right here. Um, each one of these, as you've seen before, I put in these dividers, went in straight up and down, and each one of these dividers look like this. So when you make the divider, you just put, like, two spines on each side, and it just slides right into place. So, and I just wanted to show you, so I made one really quick, what they look like. I think, probably better on that side. So, it's really easy to make. Um, I was thinking with this, um, what I want to use, like, paper-wise to decorate it would be, um, the Prima's Lyric Collection. And so, I pulled that out of my stash, and I also pulled some cheap acrylic paint and antique white from the craft store, like craft paint. And I was thinking this color would go perfect with this collection. So, um, I will paint this and decorate it and then come back and show you, um, my finished project. Okay? Till then, toodles! Hey guys, so here it is, all finished. Um, I'm kind of holding the camera, so sorry if it's a tad shaky, but it's so big it's kind of hard to get into view. Um, here it is, um, finished. I didn't want to add too many embellishments just because it is, um, a piece of storage. Um, but I did add some of Tim Holtz, like, um, little claw feet. And, um, just like a cute little pearl trim. I'm still contemplating on adding more or not. I'm not sure if I'm gonna... I, I kind of want to, but then I, I don't. I painted it, um... What is it? Sorry. Um, antique white in this apple barrel color because that's all I could find in that color at the craft store. Um, and I used Prima's lyric collection and I just um did it so it looked like you know it all matched that's from the side view even the sides inside are decorated except for like inside to here um those are just painted and I even did the sides um in this really cute distressed wood and then the back oh it's getting caught on my um tripod back there but um that's how it turned out, and I will fill it and then show you how it looks filled, okay? Hey, lovely faces. Um, okay, here it is, all filled with, um, like, my mixed media type, um, tools and stuff that I, uh, most commonly use. I got my gelatos. Um, my smooch inks, um, my big brush pens, and my watercolor pencils, and, um, my, what do you call it, palette knives, texture brushes, um, paint brushes, charcoal, um, paint pens, he's got, the shorter paint pens kind of hide down in there, but oh well, um, I might have to build, like, maybe, like, I put a little divider back here or something so my paint markers will um, come up. I know how yucky my fingers are after today. How funny. Um, I got my hot glue sticks up here. Um, some of my very favorite paintbrushes are up there that I always use for um, my art journal and stuff and my mixed media canvases and stuff like that. Um, some more paintbrushes over here. And then these are just um, my most favorite rulers that I always use. Um, and then on this big divide where I thought I was going to put um, a bunch of stacks of like watercolor paper, mixed media paper, I kind of decided to do something a little different. Um, I did use some, I used two stacks of the um, mixed media paper, but then the rest is like all my favorite stencils that I always use. Like I got my Prima stencils in here, I got masks in here um, by Prima, and then I have... Um, my favorite crafters workshop stencils, and then a few that um, I just picked up at Michael's, and they're the plaid stencils, but they're my favorite ones from plaid. So that's what I decided to put there, because I'm always using stencils, <coughs> and instead of having to go in my final cabinet and dig them out, I just decided this was probably 
a good place for those. So this is my finished project. Um, and if you have any questions or you want to attempt to make one yourself and have any questions on that, don't hesitate to ask. I always um, try my hardest to reply. So um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Toodles.